Hi, I'm Dr. Tanya here with Tuesday's tips to keep your family healthy and safe. Today we're going to be talking about contact tracing, which is going to be very important as society opens and our kids go back to camp and school. We're going to have to be able to identify and test people once they're exposed, but before they even become symptomatic and get them out of circulation in homes so they don't infect other people, as that's the only way we're going to be able to slow down the spread of COVID-19. Well, that along with hand washing, masks, disinfecting, and staying a healthy distance apart. But in addition, contact tracing and testing will play a key role. As a pediatrician, I'm already getting calls every day from families saying, hi, we were at our relatives last week and they just told us that their housekeeper tested positive and now you know, one of the relatives is sick and do we need to get tested? Do we need to worry? Do we need to stay home and quarantine? And so this is why it's important for you to know how to contact trace your own family. And if you have any questions, you can always call and ask your own pediatrician. So let's start with some of the basics. So when somebody is exposed to coronavirus, it can take up to 14 days to develop symptoms, but the majority of the time it's between day two and five. So let's start here with Henry, for example. Okay, let's say Henry wakes up in the morning on day two and mom says, gee, Henry feels a little warm. I'm gonna call school and let them know that he's not feeling well and we're gonna go to the pediatrician and get tested for COVID-19. So the school then needs to be able to look at all the close contacts that Henry was in the last two days. So that will be any children that have been near Henry within six feet for over 15 minutes. So that could be anyone that he played with on recess, it could be whoever he ate lunch with, or it could be the people who sat really close to him in the classroom. And they're gonna to need to get notified and say, there's a potential chance that your child may have been in contact with someone who may have COVID-19. We need you to stay home and we will let you know as soon as possible if they have truly been exposed. So Henry goes to the pediatrician's office on day two, gets tested, and it comes back positive on day three. So now the school knows for sure, yes, Henry does have COVID-19, and it's a good thing they notified all of those friends, because if they hadn't have notified them, this is what happens. Henry can transmit it to two friends. It's really two or three, but for the simplification here, we're gonna go with two. Each one of those friends can then transmit it to two or three more friends, and on and on and on. And that's why it's really important to be able to contact trace and stop the spread. So all of those kids, let's say it was four friends that he was in contact with at school in the past two days. You always go back two days from the start of symptoms. So now those four friends need to quarantine at home. We quarantine people who are healthy. We isolate people who are sick. Henry is now isolating at home. So the people quarantining at home will need to stay home for 14 days or they can take some tests and potentially get back to school sooner. And this may depend on your school's rules, but what I'm recommending is on day one that you find out your children might be exposed, you go and get tested. If they are positive, then you know starting that day, you have to quarantine at home for 14 days. If they are negative, they still need to quarantine at home, but if they also test negative on day seven, there's a really good chance that they do not have COVID-19 because the PCR nasopharyngeal swab is pretty good at detecting virus in your nose two to three days before you become symptomatic. So right now, based on the data we have, I'm gonna say that a child can return to school if they have a negative nasopharyngeal swab on day seven and they do not have any symptoms. So that can actually get them back to school on day eight and they will not have to miss more than a week of school. And same for adults, more than a week of work. If you have testing, if you can't get a test, then you're home for 14 days for sure. Now, let's say that Henry is sick. When can he go back to school? We know he's positive for COVID-19 and he has symptoms. So we start counting the first day he had symptoms, even if his positive test was on day three or four. So day one for Henry is this day two where his fever first started. So he's sick, 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 sick. And luckily he doesn't get too sick. He's just been home. He doesn't have to go to the hospital. 
and the fever goes away on day nine, which was when he first was infected, but really that's day seven from when he's been identified at home. As long as you are three days without fever and 10 days from when you first got sick, so that puts him here all the way at day 12, he can return to school. So you're not always out of school for two weeks. It's going to depend on your symptoms, how sick you are, how long they last, and if you can have adequate testing. Because you can really get back to school within 10 days if you have a mild illness. And after one week if you have no symptoms and a negative test, if that makes sense. Now, I understand that not everybody is going to have adequate testing, and in many cases, kids are going to need to stay home for 14 days. The other thing that can complicate this is let's say someone else in your house gets sick as well. So if you don't have symptoms, you have a negative test, and then somebody in your family tests positive, that can actually restart the quarantine process for your whole family, and that means that you may need more tests and more time at home. I know it gets really tricky, and this is why staying in close contact with your school, with your child's pediatrician, and with all of your friends and families and neighbors and anyone that you're in contact with is really important. We want to destigmatize having COVID-19. We need to be honest about it. That's really the best way to keep our family safe and to keep everybody that we're in contact with safe. So just know that if I get sick, if I test positive, I will let all of you know because I think it's really important for anyone who has been in contact with me to be able to know, to be able to quarantine at home, get themselves tested so they don't infect other people. So let's go through the few basic rules of contact tracing. If somebody is sick or tests positive, you go back two days and contact everybody that they've been in touch with and say to them, you have been exposed with someone who tested positive, you need to stay home and get yourself tested. If those people test negative, it's good, but they still need to stay home for another seven days. They can test again on day seven, and if still negative, no symptoms, no one in their house has symptoms, they can then go back to school or activities. But if anybody gets sick or tests positive, then they either need to stay home until they have had 10 days of symptoms, have three days without fever and decreasing symptoms, or if they are completely asymptomatic with a positive test, then 14 days of quarantine until they can get back to school or friends. Does that make sense? If you have any questions, please leave them here and I will come back and answer them. If you need help getting tested, call your pediatrician. Most doctors are now testing in their office with a PCR nasal swab test or directing you to a local urgent care or a public health facility that can do drive-through testing. If you're in LA County or Ventura County, you simply go online and you can sign up to test yourself or your children, even if you don't have symptoms, even if you haven't been exposed. You can make an appointment at a drive-through facility where you can get tested and you will have results back in 24 hours. And this is really important to help slow the spread and stop the spread in our community. So in addition to contact tracing and testing, don't forget wearing masks is still very important, especially as we get out and go back to camp and school. Frequent hand washing, hand sanitizing, staying a healthy distance away from people, and disinfecting surfaces. And all of this together will help get us back to our new normal life of COVID-19. I don't think it's ever going to be normal, but I do want kids to get back into school this fall. I do want parents to be able to go back to work. We, we all have to be careful and aware and um, communicative with everybody around us so we all feel open and honest and we can really trust each other. And that's the only way we're going to be able to get back to our new normal life. So I hope that helps explain a little bit about testing and contact tracing and quarantining and isolating. And tune in next Tuesday for more Dr. Tanya's tips. Thank you.